All right, so my first poem is called uh, My Working Tools, which uh, we actually did in the last week. Um, my Working Tools. Being left with the state of nothingness. Being denied my working tools. Being left to rot and wither while being asked to keep my cool. Being asked to show patience. Being asked to just hold on when being asked to show no resistance when my working tools are gone. This is my life, devoid of my laptop, aside from a pen and this notepad, aside from thoughts lost in a creative world. All of my writing has come to a stop. It's not just my computer that is out getting fixed. It's my assistant putting words on a page. Everyone can read this fine creative mix when my novel is completed and becomes all the rage. Um, writing fills up that void of nothingness. Writing is for me both creative and a working tool. Writing allows me to grow and to prosper and enables me to keep my cool. <laughs> and then the next one is called the undevotional rubiad. Um, um, because I clearly am not religious, Divine favor I do not find precious. Yet when writing this with the Sufi format, words are devotional and scandalous. Sufis appear to be having a good time when they are devising devotional rhyme. They, it is hard to write about disputed facts. Could we do poems with historical themes? Probably needed a couple of their voices on that one, but all right. Now I've got uh, another poem that I wrote on the last, next, actually the next couple of poems I did in the last class, but uh, this one's called The Main Event. A crowd bellows a mighty roar. The main event has come to town. Certainly they want more. Fanatics abound. The band plays a favorite. The team scores a goal. The underdog creates an upset and the act has sold its soul. Sweaty men pound it out, and rain of blows land, and the crowd shouts for an encore from the band. The action reaches climax. Uh, participants count out when the band plays all his tracks, and the boxer wins his bout. One by one, people disappear, heading home in good cheer. The act was great this year, Everyone hopes they return here. And in keeping with that theme, uh, the next poem is called The Summer Concert. Music flows through the air. A crowd roars for the band that plays here. A frenzied mob is held in awe as the band plays each note without a flaw. A crowd roars for the band that plays here. 400,000 fans addled on beer. <laughs> as the band plays each note without a flaw. The crowd screams as lungs raw. 400,000 fans addled on beer, arriving from far and near. The crowd screams as lungs raw with delightful good cheer. Arriving from far and near, a crowd roars for the band that plays here. With delightful good cheer, music floats through the air. Pages are a little bit tough. Yeah. All right, so this is a poem that I wrote the very first time I took a poetry class here. And uh, it's called The Space Down Below. Um, my day emerged upon a passionate affair. Before I had even brushed my teeth, a noise such as I had never heard erupted below. My, my lock, below my lock, uh, between two lovers who had come to blows. I was not sure if the fight was over their pain, but the wife screamed to her husband, she was outraged. I could tell the fight had left both parties outraged. As I sat down to breakfast, it became clear that the affair 
had escalated to things that had little to do with the couple's pain. She yelled at him and he yelled at her, and they always made noise. Every issue became a source of new ver verbal blows. The fight was so intense that beneath my feet, the, the floor shook below. For years, the couple, couple had lived below my loft, and never before had they exchanged words of outrage. So my shock was great when the two came to blows. And just when I thought that they had resolved the affair, uh, the silence was pierced with a flurry of new noise. The fight returned to the matter of the bill they needed to pay. The cost of their needs now exceeded their pay, but I cannot say how far they were below. When again they calmed down, I heard no, no more noise, but they had piqued my interest, so now I was outraged. <laughs> Glad though I was that they re had resolved their affair, their muted voices dealt my curiosity a blow. The resolve became clear when my, my door took a blow, caused by the husband knocking to inform me that they would no longer pay the rent that they had agreed to as they had solved their affair. They were moving away and would leave my space down below. Now they were at peace and it was I who was outraged. The silence would engulf me in a new kind of noise. For hours they had made a quite a noise, but despite their raised voices, they, they had not come to blows. Instead they decided to move back east with no sign of any outrage at home with their family and friends that could afford more with their pay, whereas here in my town they would always stay below the, the, their means, and so now their problem had become my affair. So the empty house was now my affair. The move was quite abrupt, with the words filling my head with noise. I now had no pay, for the face down below, and until, until it is refilled, I will be completely outraged. And, um, Moving on to the poem that I wrote just a couple weeks ago, when after my computer crashed, I decided I still had to work on my my book, so I wrote a poem that takes place in my story. It's called the Flame Wars. Um, the Flame Wars when Mercoid Mercoid killed my mother. I was only sixteen the day she died. On that day, the whole galaxy suffered, for she was a princess and an imperial ruler. Chinchnarx from Neptune found her and cried when the Flame Wars assassins killed my mother. Tyrannius had the Flame Wars when I was older, after the Union had grown in size. Yet in this new war, the galaxy still suffered. The stakes in this war were far higher. Tyrannius' status as a Union planet newly appointed um, applied. But it wasn't in this Flame War that killed my mother. These were the third and fourth flame wars, although the Union Legion still prevailed. In these wars, the galaxy suffered. I aimed to forge a peaceful era, a president for a Union with peaceful times, where flame wars won't kill someone's mother, and no one again has to suffer. And then I guess this is the last one here. It's a really short one. And I call it, I'll confess when I feel like it. <laughs> I confess to having no confessions. I confess to a complete lack of guilt. I confess that I reign in my emotions, except where my passions are felt. And that's it.